Welcome to Papa Stash 102. So we're going to do some melodic blues phrasing in a major key. A lot of us struggle with major keys. I know I did. I learned like all these awesome minor runs. And then I'm like, wait a minute, these don't work. What's up with that? It's freaking tragedy. <laughs> so I'm going to give you the three secret techniques. Secret. <laughs> I only say secret because I had no idea they existed. So to me, they were secret until I watched a couple other players talk to some guys that were real melodic and went, oh my God, it's that simple. <laughs> so I'm going to show you those three things that have helped me become a much more melodic player. I'm going to keep it really basic, really to the scale, to the chord tones, really simple example on how you can start to solo more melodic. So let's zoom in for a closer look. Check it out. All right, so I'm going to start off with this really quickly. I know we usually do a lot of songs here. We're going to get back to that. Give me some comments down below, and we'll do some more songs. But what I'm trying to do right now in, in this, you know, these, this last couple of months is to get us to understand why some of these cool solos that we've learned sound so good. And more importantly how you can create your own cool solos, much like the ones that we've learned. Now, obviously, you know, we, we study some, some of the world's best players here, but I think if you slowly start to see and conceptualize what they're doing when they're soloing, it'll help you, even if you're not, you know, a virtuoso or whatever, to at least be able to create melodic solos. Now, the three things, or the secrets, <laughs> that I would say help with that, know the scale, know the chords, and in blues in particular, sort of the call and answer phrasing, where you start off with one phrase, and then you come back with another phrase that's made up with a lot of the same notes, even the same melody, but you resolve it in a different way. A lot, the greatest blues players always do that. Not even just blues, just rock. You know, a lot of times they'll repeat a melody, but at the end they resolve it in a different way. So it's this nice, beautiful passage and it's predominantly made up of the target notes or the chord tones. So think of the scale as the map, the target notes as the destination, okay? Now, <clears throat> in this one, we're gonna use A because I always use A and it's awesome because it's right in the middle <laughs> and it's perfect. I love this key. <laughs> The map, A major pentatonic, position one, and the higher strings on position two and three. Okay, and then okay. So inside those three positions are three different A chords or target notes <laughs> a lot of times people refer to target notes but what you need to know about target notes is they're just the notes of the chords and the progression as the song's going by okay so for instance inside this first position a major pentatonic are a chords right there so you notice as you get into the d the g and the b strings that first note of your scale pattern that's the A chord. Okay. Now, some of the notes repeat, so that's not the only spot that they're located, but if we're talking just seeing chord shapes with our scales, it's easy to start with the actual chord shape. Then you can go in and you can learn, oh, wait a minute, well, the A's repeated in multiple spots in this scale. You know, the notes repeat themselves. So then you can find different fingerings and whatever. But in the beginning, just learn the basic chord shapes and where those tones are in the scale. Okay, the next one in position two, the A chord is right here. Okay, so it's six on the G, five on the B, five on the E. Okay, position three, The back side of the scale on the G, B, and E strings, your other A chord is right here. Okay? So now we got 
Position one, there's an A chord. Two, there's an A chord. And three, there's an A chord. Okay? So in every scale, shape, positions one through five, all the chords that you're gonna need in your progression, if they're true to the key, are gonna be there. Some of them, like if you throw you know, a D in there, maybe not all the notes will be in there, but then that's when you can use some of those other cool, maybe go beyond just pentatonic because that's what we're gonna do as well. Go beyond pentatonic and maybe break into some notes that might be in the major scale and stuff like that because the great players, they don't just stick to one thing. They know how to manipulate notes. They use notes all together, right in a row, chromatic stuff, all these different things. They color outside the lines, but it's based in that basic chord, scale, what have you, okay? So we can take a riff like Right? That might be the first you know, phrase. And then we're going to come back and answer that. Okay? Now obviously, you know, you can add feel, you can manipulate the timing, you know, so that the phrasing's different, but I stuck right to the scales. And I hit every one of those chord tones. Now you don't have to do that. It just takes one when the chord's going by. But in this case, why not hit all of them? So I started at the ninth fret. And then I came back. So I went nine, B string, seven, ten, back. Okay, so we've already hit two notes in that shape, okay, of that chord. So then we went. And then I come down to the higher string, hit that last chord tone. Okay, so I went seven, nine on the E, and then 10 on the B. Okay, so our whole phrase. Okay, so. So then I went backwards. Okay, so I went 10, seven on the B, back to nine, slid into my new position. Okay, hitting the third of this A chord. Okay. And then slid down, pull off to the fourth fret. Go to the B and hit five and seven, and then I went six, four, six, sliding back up to the third of the A. So all together we got. Or something to that effect. Let me play it. Yeah, I didn't I didn't pull off here. I went. And then I go. Okay, so I go nine to six to four. <laughs> Sometimes I forget what I play. I'm teaching it and I'm like, wait a minute, that's not what I played. All right, so we got. And then I'm gonna hit that note again. Okay, so I went four, six, five, seven, and then six, four, six, going back into that shape, okay? Now I didn't hit the high A, right? You don't need to, I hit two of the chord tones, that's enough, right? So we went. Okay, now I'm gonna repeat that phrase, or for the most part. And then I'm gonna go back. Almost the exact same thing, and then I'm gonna go and end up in our first position, okay? So, and then, okay, and then six, four, two, okay, all together.
Okay, use the scale. Use the chord tones. This other finger was jealous. It wanted to get in there. It's like, wait, I'm, I'm number three. I'm number three. I gotta go. Okay, so we got scale, chord tones, repeating phrase. Okay, with a different resolve at the end. Those are the hallmarks. Now, obviously, you know, we can make a, a more, you know, choice phrasing and create a more melodic part and, you know, work the scale and come up with a, you know, more incredible phrasing. <laughs> but we're keeping it simple for the point of seeing, oh, wait a second, that's a scale I always use. Now I'm actually learning how to use it because I'm applying the principles of the chord tones, right, in the A chord, to the scale, thus creating some sort of a melody leading to being melodic, right? So we got the scale, we're using how, we're, we're learning how to use, see, I can't even talk. <laughs> we're learning how to use the scale by hitting the chord tones. And then we're learning how to phrase, right? By working the call and response sort of approach. And that's a great place to start because it forces us to think about melody. One of the hallmarks in learning guitar is, you know, for me in particular too, you listen to these great players, my ego takes over, I gotta learn how to play fast and all the scales and, and learn how to burn. I mean, I remember when I was a kid, that's all I wanted to do. I gotta learn how to burn, I gotta rip. Great, there's nothing wrong with virtuosity, technique, it's really important. But now looking back after playing years and years and years, I realized that if I started with the melody, then add the technique, the melody, is what grabs people. Technique will grab people for a minute. But if you go to a show and it's a bunch of technique monsters with no melody and nothing to grab onto the emotions with, after about three songs, you're over it. If you go to the same band that may have the technique, but on top of it, they have melody, something that really grabs you, they have feel, all this other stuff, then all of a sudden you're like, man, that whole freaking show was amazing. Now, not even if they're technically incredible. If you go and you see simple music with a well-written song with a solo that's memorable, that you can hum after you've heard it, that is gold. That is what connects with people. And, you know, obviously it's not about what other people want all the time, right? But, you know, it's fun to have people in the crowd. <laughs> So these are all just things I'm throwing out. Please respond down below. Comments, love the comments. You guys are freaking awesome. I can't thank you enough for all your support, all the kind words. Every single day, I get amazing people saying amazing things and I'm just so freaking grateful and stoked with you guys. Leave song suggestions, what you wanna see me teach, whether it's rhythm, soloing, more of this kind of stuff. Super stoked to be able to do this for a living. You guys are amazing. Tell your friends, you know, get, get the, get the, just so we have this giant plethora, this guitar army, I like to call it, a guitar army of positive, fun, melody making people that just love what we do because the chance of, of us to be able to just play guitar and enjoy it and be able to have music as part of our life is so amazing. It's, awesome and i'm stoked that you guys are with me and gals because there's a bunch of gals out there too which is awesome <laughs> get you next time